Okay, this will explain a bit more what the master material does. Basically, all the floors are world aligned, as you can see. And let's go through some of the channels. Basically, this is the channel control. This is the main thing you can do. Here, you can multiply textures or decrease them. So, let's say 100, then you get a lot of repeat, repeated textures. Put 5, makes them bigger, as you can see. And you can play with the texture density there if you want to. Uh, use floor channel. Basically, it will allow you to disable the floor channel. There, you see. Let's enable it again. Uh, the use seam height channel. A lot of the meshes use uh, a green channel to hide otherwise potential seams. If you disable them, then you can definitely see where those seams will be. So let's enable them. There are meshes who don't need it, and I already set it up for you, but in any case you need it, then you know where it is now. Uh, same for the wall channel, if you ever don't need it. It might have to recompile the shaders in this case. There you go, and now I disabled the wall channel. Let me just enable it again. Uh, there's also something called distance blend. Basically, if you zoom out a lot, uh, you might be able to see it a little bit here. It slowly transits over into a bigger texture. This to disable some of the texture repeatancy on the floor and the walls, if you have a long distance cave, for instance. You can also disable this. So let's zoom out a bit and disable. There we go, and now it's disabled and enabled, disabled, enabled, disabled. I'm going to keep it enabled now. Then, as you can see, if I actually have it enabled, then I can also use a test and it will enable the checker maps. There we go, and there we go. As you can see, I only added it to the wall section because the floors are already world aligned and as you can see if I resize something that the texture size stays the same enabled disabled there okay uh, then use detail roughness which is basically just an additional detail layer uh, let's go there and if I disable this and as you can see, there's quite some difference between not using detail roughness and using it. But it's up to you, of course. And then we go to detail normal, which is basically the same thing, but then for the normal maps. I'm sure you get the point, so I'm not going to show you. But it, I got a small layer of normal details just for some small extra bumpies and thingamajings. Uh, uses for the seam hider mesh is basically uh, there are some meshes which can are used for seam hiding and that's are basically this one and one and those will have their own material instance and you just have to enable that don't worry it's already set for you and if you have any questions about it you can always contact me uh, this one is for the UVs number nine. Use mesh UV scaler. That's this tool. And if you want to disable that for some optimization or whatever. Okay, now when you scale, it doesn't scale the texture up. In that case, you can still use the multiplier, of course. And that explains that. Okay, use snow caps. I already explained it in another video. Uh, metalness value. This is just something I added for funsies. I mean, you can use it to add some small metal effect to the rocks. Sometimes it looks nice. No, you shouldn't actually use half values, but if you want to, you can, of course. I just added in for just some additional control. Okay, uh, what else is there? This channel is now being fully explored. Let's go to the diffuse. Basically, what you can do here is replace the seamless textures with something else. Um, well, why not let's do that? Um, I am cross-promoting 
with someone else who is working on the texture package. Uh, her name is Hillary, and she's working on a natural tiling materials pack. And I contacted her and asked her if I could use some of them for a showcase and for tutorial preferences. And in this case, I contacted her. She said, "Okay, that's fine." And let me. I got some of those textures imported. So let's say I want one of her meshes. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, the cliff base color, for instance. Now let's do the wall cliff base color. There. And there you have it. You have a whole new material. And it's still seamless because of the way I set it all up. Again, if you're not totally happy with the size of it, you can always rescale it until you have something that you want. And you also have to replace obviously in the normal texture and the roughness texture, but you understand that point, I'm sure. Uh, what else is there? This is for the floor. At the moment, the floor is spread over 1024, but if you want to have it smaller, move it down, or you want to have it bigger, scale that up. The floor distance texture blend is basically when you zoom out, and how far you have to zoom out before it gets there. So now it's 1024, so it zooms out much faster. It blends much faster. And let's say 4000, then it needs to be quite far before it really zooms in. It's all what you want, the user. Okay, explain those. And the same goes for the seam height texture, close and far, the wall texture, close and far, and the average texture distance plan for that. And then there's diffuse strength, something I added for fun. One is the regular, and if you multiply it, then it gets darker and darker. This way, if you want to have something a bit more light, then lower the value. If you want it darker, you can increase the value. It's a, just play with it a little bit if you want to. You don't have to. And then there's specular strength. Um, I don't have any sphere materials set up, so but we'll see. Basically, this increases the specularity, and there you have it. Makes everything look a bit more plasticy. Just another value you can play with to get something that you want. And then we go to the normal channels. It's the same as the diffuse, actually. And you can also replace the detail normal. Um, besides, that I think that's about it. Oh wait, this one is actually interesting. If you want to adjust the normal intensity at the moment, it's 1.25 because I personally like that value. You can lower or increase the amount of normal you see, which is quite handy. And the same goes for the detail normal which you won't really see of course because it's really detailed and stuff maybe if I zoom in a little bit there you go I think I kept it at 2 so you can't go over the top and same for the walls okay let's go to the roughness again you can change the roughness textures if you use seamless ones that should be all fine and these are the detail values. I use two de different detail textures. And there's medium and small. And you can increase that. Let me go to roughness again. And you can definitely see it here. You can see that it changes the detail roughness stuff. And you can also increase the roughness power. There you go. And the floor also has an additional one. 
And here's an overall roughness modifier. Basically, it adds more white or black to the overall image, as you can see. So there's a lot of versatility in the roughness maps. Okay, this feature we call snow caps. And you can activate the snow caps. There we go. There are multiple options for it down here. Um, which one shall I enable? If I want to have the snow caps on the floor as well, you can enable this. You might just have to rebuild. There you go. Now it's also applied on the floor and disabled again. We can also add a texture to it instead of just using the snow caps. And let's enable that. And let's find a proper texture for it to see how it works. Moss. Uh, I'm going to use this one. There you go. And I apply moss to it. And you can also if, choose to apply a roughness material for that. And there are some additional features. Snow cap angles. Apply moss to the floor. And the snow cap angle, which is quite interesting. Let's say I just drift to the null, zero, then everything is gone. But let's say I want this to be there. Then most of the moss is on the right side. If I do this minus one, it's on the left side. Barely because of the shadows. Let's do 0 0.5. Uh, wait, not even make it zero again. And then do this one. It's not really visible in. But maybe if I do unlit. There we go. Yeah. And minus one is on the other side. There you go. And the same for the Z. One is on the top. Minus one is on the bottom. And you can always mix and match. Maybe I want it everywhere on one side. There we go. If I want it to be more on the top, I can actually just move those to zero. I could make this minus one and this one one. And there you have it. You can apply moss on different values. And together with rescale, it works fine, as you can see. There you go. The ice cap effect.